sorted. <coughs> Alright lads, welcome back to another video. Now this one, a bit impromptu, again, another one that I'm doing just before I go to college really. It's a later start of the day, so I'm not actually up early to film this one. I'm up at a regular time, and I'm just filming it because it happened on Monday, just before Pars Roundup was a way to get uploaded. That's just typical of filming, isn't it? We don't sign a player for over two weeks, and then the first player we do sign after that two week period is on the same day that I upload Pars Roundup that I've already pre-filmed and spoke about different things and then we go make a signing that I could have literally spoken about in that same video. Cheers, Pars. But aye, the signing that we made was indeed Jonathan Afalobi. <laughs> Jonathan Afalabi. Just so you know, I will be calling him Johnny at football games from now on because Afalobi, Afalabi, it's a bit hard to remember in the heat of the moment on loan from Celtic. The 20 year old striker was once on the books of Southampton and arrived at Celtic in the summer just past there and he made an impression in training every now and then but he's ultimately coming here to get game time. Albeit in his interviews with both Southampton and Celtic when he signed there he said that he would be looking to come to a place like Celtic and get game time. He's now been loaned out to get game time somewhere else because he couldn't get it at Celtic. He's not coming because he's simply not good enough. He's just needing the game time because ultimately Celtic do have far better players at this point and it doesn't mean that Jonathan Afalabi isn't a good quality player because he's actually come with quite glowing reviews from even just the replies on Twitter from when the loan signing was announced on Monday. It's very positive to see that when you sign a player, of course, because a lot of players can get really bad reviews. <coughs> Danny Devine. Sorry, Danny, but you did get quite bad reviews from all the teams you were at. But that simply wasn't the case with Afalabi. The signing was announced on Monday and it came in from the Celtic end where you looked when they announced it on their Twitter. All of their fans were saying, good opportunity for him, good club to go to, etc. He'll get game time, we'll be able to score goals, that's a good acquisition, etc, etc. And it was the same sort of thing on our announcement of it as well, with some of your fans being quite buoyant about the transfer as a whole as well. Me, myself, I am quite buoyant about it at the end of the day. We did probably need another striker, simply because, obviously, Andy Ryan went out the door on loan to Airdrie in this window, and we don't really have a lot of options in the forward areas. We've got Kevin Nisbet, of course, who is simply untouchable in front of goal just now, unplayable, unstoppable, any word that defines a player that is utterly playing out of his skin. And then you've got players like Gary McGill and Lewis McCann sort of on the fringes of the first team and ultimately they're just not the quality that you would want as your backup striker. I like Gary McGill and I spoke about it in Pars Rounder that we do need to give him a chance but there is the glaring obvious that we needed another striker in the squad just for numbers as well because if anything, pretty god it doesn't, did happen to Kevin Nisbet then we would be pretty stuffed in terms of up front. So the fact that we've brought someone in who seems to be of a decent calibre as well, that can only be good for us. I'm sure you'll be noticing, by the way, that this is slightly better quality than the Pars Roundup video just the other day there. I did make a mistake before that video was filmed and didn't fully check that I was in peak focus. Well, a minute today you can see me for all my flaws and all my imperfections. Hope you enjoy it. Afalabi was with Southampton before Celtic, playing in the under-23s and the reserves, so a similar sort of vein to Gary McGill's career so far, except he played for Middlesbrough, I believe it was. So Afalabi does come with a similar sort of pedigree that Gary McGill came with. Gary McGill scored goals at both those levels, and so has Afalabi. But the thing that sets Afalabi apart from a player like Gary McGill, etc., is the fact that he is an under-19 Irish international, albeit now he's 20 years old, so he's now ineligible to play for the under-19s, but I do imagine that if he keeps performing to a decent enough level in his career, then he could continue to get picked for the age groups, the various age groups at Irish international level, so that's a good wee thing for him to have as well. It shows that he's got decent enough pedigree and he is regarded as a good talent, because at the end of the day, he is a bit of a no-one to probably most of them filming fans. I can vaguely remember Celtic signing him in the summer, but even I, 
who has a pretty decent knowledge of quite a lot of players within Scottish football because I have to look at them and talk about them quite a lot. I didn't really know this guy. So it's good that he's coming with that bit of pedigree, bit of international experience at any level of international experience. It's always good to have that. And the fact that he has scored previously in levels such as the under-23s down south. You can kind of roll the dice with those type of players. At the end of the day, they've got a good goal-scoring record that's proven at a certain level. Can they make that step up? Obviously, players like Gavin McGill still have to do that. Young boys coming up and trying to make their mark in professional football. Afalabi will certainly be looking to do that here and then go back to Celtic next season and hopefully make his claim for a starting place or at least be on the periphery of being in the first team at Celtic. That's his ultimate aim, obviously. He said that in his interview when he signed in the summer that he wanted to get game time at Celtic. He's not been able to do that just yet. Six months into his deal, he's found himself out on loan to us. I believe it's a good place for him to get out on loan as well because at the end of the day, he's going to be playing with a top quality striker in Kevin Nisbet. Hopefully, he can be a sort of target man type player who can help be a good foil for Nisbet in the next four or five months of the season and hopefully, perhaps, push us towards the promotion playoffs because we're not exactly a mile off of them and ultimately that is our aim this season. And if Afalabi can do anything in a positive light to get us there, then he'll be remembered fondly and he can go back to Celtic with good memories of his first time playing men's professional football. I'd love to know your opinion on this signing. Obviously, there's not much to go by from him himself, but... There has been a couple of goals and you can look at them on YouTube, I'm not going to put them in here because um could get copyright striked, but you can go and have a look. He's scored quite a few at under-23 level, as I've already said, when he played for Southampton. So there is proof in the pudding there that he can score goals. Some of the goals he actually scored on the YouTube highlights that I've seen were quite good. He scored one for Celtic against Morton Reserves a few months ago where it was a nice wee back flick finish and it was very cool, very calmly done. So those are the type of finishes we want to see from Jonathan Afalabi at East End Park, playing in black and white and hopefully pushing us towards the promotion playoffs this season. And who knows? Push us towards promotion. Go on, Jonathan, do it for us. But aye, that's it for this video, guys. Cheers for watching. If you did enjoy it, please give it a like. Comment down below your thoughts on the signing of Jonathan Afalabi, whether you're a Celtic fan, because you might know a wee bit about him, a bit more than I do, or if you're a Tim Fellman fan, of course, what do you think of the signing? Is it a good signing because of the numbers we had up front, etc, etc. Subscribe for more of this type of content, and until the next video, I'll see you then. Cheers, guys.